My name is Paul Dayton. Uh, I'm an oceanographer here at Scripps. I'm a biological oceanographer. I was actually born in Tucson, Arizona, and got into diving very early when I made my own scuba gear. There wasn't scuba gear in, available for us in 1954. And I made my own tank equipment and was diving in the Gulf of California. And in those days, there, the whole place was just a forest of big gorgonians, and the, some of the fish were just huge. They seemed as big as cows. There were big flocks of yellowtail and yellow fins, all sorts of tuna. Uh, the groupers were massive. They could, you know, they seemingly could inhale me. Uh, it was a, a wonderful, wonderful world. And as a little kid, I grew and fell in love with it and always dreamed of being a, a marine biologist. And my dream came true. I came to Scripps in 1970 and I was studying straightforward, old fashioned ecology. I was interested in community dynamics, the, how ecosystems are put together. Um, my assumption was always that, that the ecosystems that I was studying were more or less the ecosystems that had evolved in place so that I was, I was studying an evolutionary process. I could look at interactions between different species and say this is how evolution works. These are the dynamics that hold the community together, the glue for the whole ecosystem. And that was what we were doing in the early part of my career. And in the late 1980s, I realized that, that the ecosystems I was studying, which here in La Jolla are kelp forests, that the kelp forests didn't have most of the players. The fish were disappearing. And by 1990, the uh, fish were, were not gone, but the big fish were gone, and the, most of the interesting fish were not functional units in the community anymore. They were depleted by orders of magnitude. They weren't, they were not I extincted. They're still there, but you almost never see them. And so suddenly I realized that, that my whole world that I was trying to study has been changed. And I started looking around the rest of the oceans, and they too have been changed. And the, um, even the, the, the big pelagic systems have lost something like 90% of the big predators. So we have an ocean that, that has lost most of the important predators. How, what does that do to an ecosystem? What, what fills in those voids? What really goes on when you lose most of the top end of your ecosystem? And these questions you know, are still not answered. They're really difficult. You really, it, it takes a great deal more resources than, than we have. And, and uh, so I don't know the answers to what really affects are going on in, say, my kelp forest. I don't know what a f role the, the groupers and the black sea bass used to have when they were here in such numbers. I don't understand you know, how this system works anymore. It's very difficult and frustrating to try to study a system which just isn't really there. So I fell out of the ivory tower. That is, most ecologists and most scientists are trained to not fall, be in the public eye. We're supposed to be impartial you know, observers that are sitting in our ivory tower and don't come out and talk. But I started doing it in, the in about 1990. And, and, and it's been remarkably difficult to get my message across. And I've, I've wondered what the problem is. Why can't we get traction? And what happened in my experience is that as a kid, we were fighting civil rights battles. We were fighting pollution. We were fighting wars. We were very idealistic in the 50s and 60s. And there we, we always had this assumption that if a scientist could actually demonstrate some difference, some real problem, that the public would respect what we were showing them. We assumed that the public had compassion for nature and for each other. We assumed that there was a, a core decency in the country, even as the civil rights battles were going on. And now we, we don't have that assumption. The, the problem seems to be that, that the people that are opposed to change and, and correcting the ecosystem problems, uh, the, the big businesses, the, the people who are, have vested interests in business as, as usual, have managed to use the news media to destroy the credibility of the ecologists, of the scientists. And the science bashing has succeeded. And my sense is right now that we don't have this, this respect for competent quality science that we used to have. And this is a real problem. We, need, we, need, we desperately need help educating the public about what these problems really are. 
And, and this, this is something that we're not trained to do. I'm a diver. I'm trained to study ecosystems. I don't know how to influence the public. We need some domain like .eco to help us um, get across this message that we're not, you know, we're not whores, we're not bad people. We, I, I like to fish. I'm just a normal person that grew up in normal neighborhoods. And I'm not a demon. And the scientists are not demons. They're trying to solve the problem, and yet this, this demonizing has made us so, so uh, insecure that, that we are overly conservative. And you'll find that the, that the uh, global warming scientists are very careful. They, they will exaggerate way off to the conservative side when they make projections about, say, the melting of the ice in the Antarctic or in the Arctic. I've worked in the Arctic. I, I understood the ice problem long ago. And just without being a scientist talking about it, because I'm just a diver, I've always told people, I thought that, this, that the ice would melt in the, in the Arctic um, you know, in maybe 25 or 30 years. And, and the, the experts were saying, well, maybe 100 years, because they were afraid to, be, uh, to look like extremists, which is the way the science bashers present them. So, um, so what they're doing is being extremely careful and cautious and the ice is melting. I mean, their worst fears, it's probably worse than their worst fears, and they've been afraid to talk about it because of the science bashing. And so I really hope that somehow we can get you know, some, some form of, of public education out of .eco. It would be an extremely important contribution.